Right, folks, here we are again uh, uh, in, the, in the company of a JDC ambassador, the man himself, Mr. Paul Nicholson. Paul, how is things going with you and how's lockdown treating you? Not too bad. I've been very fortunate in the respect that I've been quite busy. And if you speak to some people, they've, they've, yeah, they've been, <laughs> some people have been struggling with, uh, you know, finding things to do. Uh, they've been taking up new hobbies and things. But for me, it's, uh, it's, it's been an ad adaptation uh, sort of period for me. So I've had to adapt, obviously, with the, the, the Live League project with Motor Sports. Uh, that's kept me very busy for the last two and a half months, which is, yeah. uh, it's just been one of those things that when you wake up in the morning, you have a focus. and even before that started, my focus was throughout this whole uh, lockdown process to maintain fitness, maintain a good mental health strategy. Uh, but in relation to my commentating and my playing side of my business uh, and the stuff I love to do, mm. I've had something to do on both sides of that. And I'm eternally grateful uh, for the people at Motorsports who have allowed me to be part of the project. It's been, it's been tremendous. Well, I can imagine you'd be uh, this aside, chomping at the bit because we're missing out the European stuff and the, the punditry and all this. Uh, and, and your pal Dan, who's been stuck in a chair for 45 days or whatever it was uh, on, on the other on the PDC tour. Um, so you must be missing that, obviously. Yeah, I, I miss Dan terribly. He's, he's great company. He's incredibly intelligent. And he, he's the kind of person when you work with him, you learn from him every day. And the fact that he's been locked up for, uh, I don't know how long it is now in one room, he's, he's going to be like Julie Andrews coming out into the <laughs> pastures when he finally gets to Budapest in September. So it, it'll be great to get back onto the European tour. It's a shame it's such a short uh, European tour season this year. That's something we have to adapt to. But as a, as a species, as a human being, that's what mm -hmm. we have to do, right? We have yeah. to adapt to our environment and we have to move on and move on stronger. And I think that's something that we're all learning about right now. One thing we must say that if you do start to freeze up, I believe there's a bit of a sort of electrical storms going on around you at the minute. <laughs> Maybe it's got something to do with what the darts are going to do today um, with the live league. We're maybe about to get another nine darter, which would be great because we have had a couple. Yeah. One from Aaron yeah. Monk and one from Martin Adams, which, uh, I mean, it's great to see Martin playing so well uh, over the last uh, few months. But uh, I wonder how, how good he's going to be when it get back, gets back to the live tournament. He's going to be really sharp. But, yeah, we've got a few storms around. But um, it's welcome because uh, the garden does need a bit of a sprinkle. Yeah. You say about the, those that are coming back and, and obviously playing. Doing online darts at the minute is keeping everybody sharp. Uh, it must be. Uh, and I've heard stories of people, even with, with youngsters, that have started to play online and improving their game so um any message for those that perhaps haven't picked up their darts a bit i mean you know that try and get back into that routine and i know it's probably a bit weird if you're doing it in your kitchen or but there is a there is a good good purpose to doing it yeah absolutely there's no excuse it doesn't matter whether you're number one in the world or whether you're uh, someone who's just started i mean I've, I've heard from some of the the darts companies the equipment providers that they've had incredible sales because mm. um you don't need a great deal of room to play darts in a household environment in a safe way as well. And if you say to me or anybody else, well, I don't have anybody to play against. Well, you don't have that excuse anymore, do you? Because yeah, technology yeah. has evolved. So there is no excuse. Uh, I think it's incredible that, uh, you know, so many people, not just the existing people within our game, are saying that darts has stood up and, it is now being counted as one of the, the saviors of sport during this period. Mm. But we've had people like Tiger Woods talking about darts on a Zoom call. And you think, hang on a minute, we're starting to transfer into some different territory here. <laughs> so when you have someone as huge as Tiger talking about our game, it makes us proud. It makes us very proud of what we've done with the game in the last few years because we've taken it to a new level. And people should be protecting the reputation of this game right now and enhancing it with everything they do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we need ambassadors for that. We need people to do it in the right way. Uh, we need people to promote it in the right way. And we, we need a, a structure, I suppose, from the ground level. So as it happens, things are looking um, pretty good for the game. Uh, and, uh, but, but putting darts aside a little bit, Twitter uh, and you know you, you you do love to post a picture of food uh, so I'm assuming you're a bit of a cookie uh, and uh, you're going to be entering MasterChef next year? 
Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, I just find myself really good at uh, following a recipe and sometimes doing my own stuff. I mean, today I cooked a beef stroganoff before we started this call, which is quite early in the morning, but you get it in the slow cooker for eight hours and it turns out really nice. But I'm just one of those people. I, I grew up with a brother who is a chef and he's cooked for the queen. He's cooked ah. for prime ministers. So right. when I lived with him for a year, certain things I took in, I thought, well, oh, this sounds like fun. So I gradually started to learn myself. I bought a lot of cookbooks. And as you start to travel around the world, you go to places like Australia, New Zealand, all around Europe, the United States and Canada, you start to learn that worldwide food is, uh, is a bit of a passion. And yeah. I just wanted to keep that going. I wanted to create my own little traditions, my own little memories and try and recreate some of the stuff that I found around the world. So Nico cookbook. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> sometime in the future. The dark player on tour. Everybody going to the Premier Inns with their hot, hot pot things, you know, slow cookers. <laughs> I tell you what, that's, that wouldn't be my idea. I remember when I used to uh, go and stay at Jamie Caven's house yes. uh, in Derby before Pro Tours in Barnsley and Derby. And his wife, Debbie, would always make uh, some sweet treats for the Sunday for the security people and the staff. And I always thought it was a wonderful thing to do. But sneakily, she always used to make me and Jamie a pasta salad, which was good, healthy stuff for our time when we were playing and uh, more often than yeah. not it used to work it used to give us the energy we needed yeah well you know we we we, we, we would definitely uh, suggest that's a great idea for those and especially the youngsters that are going to be traveling around and you know put something in the bag pack your own fresh food and, and, and a banana or something instead of always searching for that burger and chips i suppose um, yeah don't don't rely on the venues uh, no, i mean some of the venues good. will will provide you with something but your own destiny when it comes to your health and fitness and your well-being it's in your own hands so take care of yourself yeah absolutely well you do i mean you know you you, you say we've talked about the fitness and the food etc um but um you mentioned also um uh, about state of mind and, and working with you know fitness etc so advice for the youngsters out there that, that that preparation for games and that you're a firm believer that not you know whacking the weights and all that kind of sort of fitness it's 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 a it's a more of a sort of flexibility thing is it yeah i think it's it's moderate strength and flexibility the the same sort of thing that pilates sort of focuses on core right. strength which is good for balance on the hockey uh you're looking at uh maybe resistance bands instead of heavy weights because that mm -hmm. will work the muscles but it'll also help the joints and not put too much pressure on the joints but flexibility can be key. I mean, you look at some of the dart players from previous generations, how they used to struggle to pick a dart flight off the floor, where you want nice, supple and uh, flexible hips, uh, you know, good uh, ability to rotate your back and, and bend over. You, flexibility, in my opinion, is one mm. of the things that's forgotten about, well, uh, especially when... It uh, takes a hell of a hammering, doesn't it, if you like this all the time, you know? Yeah, it does. You look at someone like Michael Van Gerwen and, and uh, you know, Rob Cross who have stances mm -hmm. which are quite twisted. Yeah. What you've got to do if you play as long as those guys do is you've got to have a way of counteracting that twist. So you've got to make sure that the, the spine is supple. I think it's really important because the last thing you want to do is play for 20 or 30 years and at the end of it have trouble well, uh, with things like your ankle, your knee, your hip or your back. Yeah, and, and uh, being an observation of the tours and except. There's a hell of a lot more tournaments going on. So surely you're putting yourself into that position 100 times more than you ever used to. So therefore, got to work on that, surely. Yeah, I think so. One of the reasons why players like Steve Beaton, for instance, hasn't really had much in the way of injuries is that he keeps things really simple. The only thing that Steve does really is that he puts his entire right side of his foot against the hockey. He's, he's quite side on, but the rest of his body's completely relaxed. Mm -hmm. If you're in a stressful position as you throw, that's going to gradually get worse over time. And you are going to need fit things like physio and you're going to have to do exercise to counteract that. So I think the key for a long career is to have a nice relaxed stance, but you've got to have core strength and good flexibility to make sure that you don't get those injuries later on. Wise advice. Absolutely right. And, and I'm sure that can only help in those because naturally there's going to be stressful situations. You're going to be shooting for a match or under pressure or whatever. Uh, the more relaxed you are, the, the more your, your body will do what you want it to do, I guess. Um, yeah, now, you would think so. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Um, so the, let's get back to you Miss uh, as Paul. Um, a few people may have seen that obviously 
we've got a new generation of people watching darts and some that have obviously watched it for a long time. You play for Australia. So, and obviously people will be thinking, well, he sounds like he's from up the northeast. What, what's the connection there then? Well, when I moved to Australia in early 2005, I went over there with no real idea what I was going to do with darts. I'd, I'd pretty much finished up my county career uh, for Northumberland and I'd, mm -hmm. I'd fell out of love with the game for, um, for a little while and I thought I'll just take them over there because I was moving there anyway. Right. But I, I got into a, a small league over there and, and graduated over the course of a couple of years towards playing in tournaments. And in that time, I gained my permanent residency there and I was eligible to play uh, under the Australian flag. At no point at that time did I think that was going to happen. Mm. But then when I started to play Dark Players Australia stuff, which is the feeder system towards the PDC, um, it was uh, playing one tournament, had a pretty good run, but then the next one I won it. And then within 12 months, I'd won the entire tour. So it was pretty say, quick. I was looking at some of the figures, you you know, around the 2000s, well, seven, eight, whatever it was, through to 10, et cetera. You, you were doing all right, weren't you? Yeah, I won quite a lot of events. And yeah. I was I won I won the first Australian match play and defended it the following year, which I'm, I'm very, very proud of. But when I first qualified for the... Uh, the World Championships in the 2009 Championships and, of course, the 2008 Grand Slam via the DPA circuit. It was only fair uh, that through my permanent residency and citizenship through Australia that I play under their flag because it was their order of merit. I could have played under an English flag if I wanted, but yeah, that would have yeah. been a bit of a, a kick in the teeth to the Australian system. I wanted to repay their, their faith in me by giving them, me the vehicle to live my dream and I said to myself, for a minimum period of 10 years, I'm going to play under your flag and I'm yeah. going to give you everything I've got. And, uh, you know, I was married to a, an Australian woman at the time. Um, consequently, that didn't last particularly long into my career because I had to come back here and things went awry. But I, I stayed uh, with under the Australian flag until very recently where I, I decided it was the right time to, um, you know, let everybody else take the helm with, you know, Captain Whitlock, with Kyle, um, with uh, you know, the likes of Damon Hetter coming through, I thought, yeah. you know what? I, I think I've, I think I've repaired my um, my time as, a, as an Australian player, and I think it's time for the other guys to to move forward with it now. So, is that where the uh, is that where the shades came from then? Because it's obviously it's always so sunny and hot in, in Australia. No, no, that's, that's a, a misconception because if you go back to my early county days when I used to play for Northumberland in uh, in Ashington. Uh, at the Northern Club and then consequently at the Marlborough Club in Newcastle. Uh, I was a big fan of the Matrix movies. Oh, yes. And yes. Uh, I was a big lover of uh, heavy metal music, particularly a band called Rob Zombie. Right. And my walk on song back then was a very heavy track by Rob Zombie. And uh, I was wearing glasses at the time. So what I would do is I would take the glasses off, uh, sorry, take the sunglasses off and then put my real glasses on. It was part of my walk on routine. Mm. But this was way before I turned professional in the sort of 2008 period. Uh, this, I was doing this in 2001, 2002. But I was just trying to be as cool as Neo and failed miserably. <laughs> but, but again, it, it's all back down to this. You, you're such a, I don't know, you've got this thing. Of, uh, preparation is key with you, is it? I mean, it's almost like that sort of is getting you all so prepared and you've got your walk on structured. Everything's very structured uh, when it comes to you in sport. And I, I think that's something that a lot of people could uh, take a little piece of there. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, I've been accused of being too regimented uh, by oh, yeah. a few players. And I, I totally agree with them because I am a bit of a creature of habit. But at the same time, it's that approach which got me to where I was. And potentially it could get me back sometime in the future if that's yeah. what I choose to do. So I think my approach of no stone unturned and staying focused that way, I think it was it was definitely something that helped me. Yeah. So in, in the last, I mean, obviously we're going to let you go because you've got a, a matches to play, I'm sure, later on. Um, you know, a, a darts aside, and obviously you love your fitness and, and cooking and whatever, what sort of things does, what sort of things does Paul like to do to relax? Got to be a film. Let me think. You Netflix man. Yeah, you know, or gardening. No, no. I cut the grass. Uh, that's about it. I'm. I'm not really into uh, things like. I mean, other things that I like to do. 
Uh, I mean, yoga takes up a bit of my time because yeah. I, I like to I like to make sure that my mental health is looked after. That is that's been a key for that in the last twenty years. Mm. Uh, but I, I do like to read. I like John Grisham novels. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah. I do like to. I'm, I'm particularly obsessed with it. Uh, a, a game of of golf on my phone, which I'm I've got quite a very high level on it now. And it's become a bit of an obsession. So I might have to stop doing that. I like doing brain training on my phone as well every day just to try and stay When they um, open the, um, stay educated. The, the golf courses were you there chomping at the bit at 7 a.m. To... <laughs> but Absolutely. You were, everybody you and Rod everybody knows I'm a mad golfer. <laughs> <laughs> I've not played very well over the last uh, few weeks. I'm not going to lie because I usually play off a handicap of three. But that's starting to climb again, which I'm not happy about. But hopefully... Sometime soon, I'll get to play with some friends of mine because I, I love playing golf for the likes of Steve West, Merv King, and some of my other friends who I'm not going to run with on tour. So, fingers crossed, it's not too long before that happens. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, Paul, it's been an absolute pleasure to have a chat with you. Uh, it's just nice to see that everybody's okay. Um, we, we obviously can see you playing on the, on the, on the Modus Tour as well. And we look forward to having you back from the JDC's perspective. I mean, you've been an absolute great ambassador. What people probably don't see is some of the work you do to help us with our educational system, with what we do with our academies, and the times you might put somebody in touch with somebody, that kind of thing. Um, you're an absolute star for that, and I appreciate your time today. So My pleasure. all the best, and um, look forward to catching up with you soon. And I hope everybody's enjoyed our little chat. Thanks, Darren. Take care, Paul.